What's up guys, welcome back to yet another riveting episode here on the Avion Awesome channel and today we're going to be talking about Diamond Caverns RV Resort and golf. Now as a Thousand Trails member, this is the one and only Thousand Trails campground in all of Kentucky and thankfully it's located in a pretty nice section where it's surrounded by all of Kentucky's caves. But man, does it have some problems let's get started so first off let's talk about where it's located you're right here in mammoth cave national park you were just outside of the national park and it is just west of interstate 65 that runs north to south in this area you're going to find a lot of different stuff to do both for adults kids uh you're really close to nolan uh river lake you're very very close like i said right down the road from mammoth cave national park and of course you've got plenty of other uh, caves in the area including diamond caverns which is right here on property this is diamond caverns and this is the diamond caverns rv resort and golf um, office so it is in the same little loop right here and then the rv park is down this side of the road on the opposite side of uh, 255 so you're going to find most of what you're looking for in this area i think there's like a dollar general store down in this area you'll find uh, some extracurricular activities for you and the kids uh, in this area uh, but if you're wanting anything major if you're wanting to like maybe say walmart or something like that you're going to have to drive out here to glasgow which is about a 15 or 20 minute drive roughly depending on which road you actually take to get from point a to point b but in Glasgow, you'll be able to find just about everything that you're looking for, including, like I said, Walmarts, Targets, stuff like that. Okay, so let's take a look around. This is coming down 255 from Interstate 65, and we're going to be taking a right here into the Diamond Caverns office parking lot. Now, this is both for the RV park, as you can see the RV coming there from the left. Uh, this is where you're going to check in in this building right here. Uh, you're also going to have a golf cart path off to your right. And this is where you will do not only your check-in, but you'll also be able to uh, pick up any informational pamphlets. They do have some flyers and stuff for all the different caves that are in the area. And of course, you're going to have Diamond Caverns right here uh, in the same area. So if you come through the parking lot and you go down to this building uh, after you get your rv and stuff situated you can drive right over here uh, to this larger white building and you can check in get your uh, diamond caverns tickets and you can go right down inside the cave in this building they also have a library here on premises. I've never really seen that before. Not really for sure what that's all about. I didn't happen to go in, but maybe if you're feeling adventurous, you can walk in there to the National Cave Museum and Library. So once you go through this little loop, you'll come back out to uh, 255. You'll take a left and we'll go on up the road to the RV park itself. Now, before I get into describing all the different things uh, and amenities that this particular park has, I'm going to give you just a quick little drive through of the park so you can kind of get an idea of what uh, you're going to expect when you uh, decide to visit Diamond Cameron's RV Park Resort and Golf. Um, I am not a huge fan of this park. I'm just going to say that right off the bat. I think that if you were just coming here uh, to park and then go out and about and see the other stuff, I say fine. Um, but like I said, this place has a few problems. I think that the people were overall fairly nice, but uh, this is uh, a kind of park that's essentially going to be closed half the year. Uh, Kentucky's not known for its great weather in the wintertime, and winter lasts about four to six months, kind of, uh, depending on you know the location and uh, the type of weather we had that year. But I'll let you guys take a look around and see what you all think. And then we'll come back and we'll discuss all the different things that uh, the Diamond Caverns RV Park actually has.
So as you can see, half the park is paved uh, toward the front, and the rest of it is essentially gravel. So uh, if you don't like to park in gravel, this is probably not for you. If you're looking for nothing but pull-throughs, this place is probably not for you. Um, it's Kentucky's a very hilly state. Uh, it's surrounded by the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Um, this was... Again, not my favorite park. It's not to say that it was bad necessarily. It was just very unkempt. Uh, some of these buildings look like they just absolutely needed to be knocked down and completely rebuilt. It's just old. Um, but I'll give you a view of what my campsite looked like. And as you can see, I didn't have much of a front yard at all. It was basically about a truck's width uh, of grass uh, until you got to the next RV site. So again, this is not entirely a bad thing, uh, especially if you're just planning to park and then go uh, out and adventure and see the caves. Um, but all the ones here on the right-hand side, they were all pull through. You could get uh, in from either the left side or the right side. But let's take a look at the pool. I was really interested in getting in this particular area. It was going to be a very hot weekend. Figured we might do some swimming, but it was closed for a bad pump motor, but they had said that it was only going to be a couple of days uh, that the pool was going to be out of commission, but it was out, according to some of the uh, people that had been there for a while, said that it had been out for a couple of weeks. And the only other uh, swimming hole in the area was over at the golf course, which is down the road probably about a mile, mile and a half. Next up, let's talk about these bathrooms. Um, again... I was not very impressed. As you can see, the buildings are pretty shoddy. Uh, they're not very well kempt at all. Uh, you walk in, it's, you know, like baby blue and stuff. Um, very old, very dated. Uh, this was the shower that I used uh, the first night that we stayed there. At first glance, it looks pretty good. You've got a stool uh, so that you can sit down and put your... Um, Socks and shoes on. It does have a rack. It's missing a hook. Uh, you open the curtain and wow... That's just not appetizing whatsoever. That handle there for your hot and cold water was super duper janky. It was very hard to dial in uh, hot and cold water. Some of the woodwork, as you can see, it's just, they're kind of just like patch jobs. The sinks were in horrendous condition. This was probably one of the worst bathrooms that I've ever seen when it comes to a thousand trails um, campground. So, as I said, most of the stuff was clean. Uh, it was well stocked. It's not like it was horrendous or anything, uh, but it was not good. Uh, I've camped outdoors and have had better accommodations in some cases. Uh, there's just not much accessibility for uh, wheelchairs and people that have mobility issues. So that might be a thing if you plan on using um, their facilities. I think that if you're in your own camper uh, and you have full um, accessibility, you know, using your own bathrooms, using your own showers, and you don't ever plan to use the public facilities, this is not going to matter to you. But for those of you that, you know, want to make full use of the, uh, the campground and their facilities, that might be a thing. Okay, so we're coming out of the bathroom now, and I'm going to hang a right here. I'm going to take you to the recreation center, or the game room as they call it, and uh, give you a, a quick look around. So I think the running theme here is basically going to be dated. Um, the, I don't know, I, I want to try and be nice because I think that most people at these places, they try, but... Uh, it's just, it, it kind of looks like someone had went out to a bunch of yard sales, grabbed a bunch of random stuff that they found, and then just jammed it in this room. Um, if They did have a small children's area, which I thought was pretty cool. I, I don't think I'd seen this in any other uh, RV park, uh, Thousand Trails or otherwise, where they actually had very small stuff for very small children. So I thought that was a nice addition. Um, just wish it had been a little bit more updated. These... Uh, old uh, button style chairs. Uh, they did have a couple of pool tables and a foosball table and a ping pong table. Um, I was unable to locate the sticks, uh, the paddles, or the foosball. 
uh, whatsoever. I don't know where they had those. I don't know where they store those. I don't know if you had to go and get permission to get them out of a closet or you know some secret location. All I know is that I was never able to locate them, and I did uh, look around quite a bit trying to hunt them down, but uh, I never could find them. Um, the place would be pretty damn awesome if they would just update this place, uh, make it feel a bit more modern, make it feel a bit more welcoming. As you can see, even the TV is like an old projection style TV. It's just not very good. Um, as we move across the way, uh, this is called, I think it's called the pavilion, but I'm not a hundred percent for sure about that. Now, this is where they hold their church services uh, every Sunday at 9 a.m., um, and we also attended an ice cream social in this building. So, again, it's not bad. It's just dated. Um, so, you can see there's a PA system here in the room. Uh, this is the podium for the pastor to uh, give the uh, Sunday morning church service. It's just it's kind of a hodgepodge of a different uh tables, chairs, and accessories. Like I said, it's not bad. It's just dated. Um, the building directly across from the pavilion is where you would go in for your Thousand Trails membership upgrade. Um, I was there on a Saturday when the uh, representatives were there. Um, I talked to them briefly. We were trying to locate something, but right here on the right-hand side is where the membership office is if you're looking to upgrade your Thousand Trails membership so that you can stay for up to 21 days. As you can see, most of the furniture is just kind of outdated. Uh, I think this is sort of like a reading room, maybe a, a small cafe. I'm Honestly, I'm not for sure. I didn't spend hardly any time in this uh, room whatsoever. They did have the large checkers here, so if you want to play that, I guess you can do that. This is the computer room and library. It was the smallest computer slash library room that I've ever seen. Um, so... But it, it was a quiet place, so I, I don't want to take away from the fact that they at least provided that. But uh, that was what it was, um, and that's about it. I didn't see any um, Wi-Fi hookup or anything. They did say that it was available for free. Um, I never used any of the campground Wi-Fi. And they had a scale here for some reason. I have absolutely no idea why, though. All right, now let's take a quick trip down here to the mini golf area. This is where, like, in my opinion, it was just really bad. Like, one of the major uh, amenities at most of these things, for whatever reason, happens to be the mini golf. Uh, but it was just in shambles. It was absolutely terrible. The you, This is the room that you pick up your golf club, your ball, and your scorecard. But as you can see, the woodwork is, I don't know, it just looks really bad. It, it's... It, you can see the wood falling away here on the wall. Um, it looks like they're trying to update it. I don't know um, how long it's been in this condition, but as you can see, uh, they're basically just using PVC pipe uh, as the bumper. Um, the top portion here that I'm walking on right now wasn't in very bad shape whatsoever. It was actually kind of newish, but if you look down there, it's pretty messed up. So I think that they are currently trying to upgrade the uh, mini golf park uh, at the moment, but a lot of the concrete work was uneven. It was not very smooth. Um, it was just in really, really bad shape. I was just not a fan of how bad it looked and the fact that it was in this condition. This, These are the kinds of things that you want to do on the off season, not when people are actually visiting. It leaves a horrible first impression and I'm right there with them. Like, I just didn't find it very appealing to be in this area whatsoever. Okay, so let's head away from the mini golf area and let's check out some of the other amenities that uh, Diamond Caverns RV Resort has to offer. The first stop is going to be the uh, Horseshoe Pit, which is not much of a pit. It was completely grassed over. Uh, the only thing that was sand um, was the actual pits. Uh, as you can also see, the tree is completely encroaching in over onto the pits, and these railroad ties uh, were looking pretty bad. Um, probably been there for maybe you know, 15, 20 years. Uh, they were just looking really shoddy. So again, uh, it's not that it's absolutely horrible, it's just not very well kept. Uh, the maintenance really needs to step it up. Moving on to the basketball court, which is not even a court, it's just a concrete slab with a hoop cemented there uh, I mean at least they have it I suppose most kids are probably not going to care but uh, maybe it's just us adults that nitpick this stuff to death 
They did have a picnic table over here to the right. Looked pretty old. Um, they had another one over here, kind of like for the parents to sit while their kids were doing various activities. Um, this was the playground. We did happen to have a nine-year-old child with us, and she did play here. Um, but I could see several different hazards with this thing. Uh, granted, I know that it's a playground, and uh, you kind of play at your own risk. But, I mean, the maintenance, again, is what really stood out uh, to me with this thing. Uh, some of the boards were missing. Some of the boards were uneven. Uh, some of the stuff didn't seem like it was bolted together very well. Stuff just needed to be updated. Stuff needed to be replaced. Um, the paint was chipping and coming off of some of these support poles and beams. Um, the plastics were looking pretty degraded uh, and sun-stained. So, you know, I'm being overly picky now. I never visit the playgrounds, but we happen to have a kid with us this time. So now I feel like I need to bring it to your all's attention. This was the entire swing set. It was just one broken swing, and that was pretty much it. So it's not like this couldn't easily be remedied. It just looks like they don't care. With that being said, I'm going to take you down to the laundry room. Uh, the one and only laundry room that I know that is on premises. Uh, there might be another one, but this is the only one that I knew of. This is the one that's in the back of the park. Um, the biggest oversight, in my opinion, is that there is just no way for you to get any change for the laundry room. Uh, they do have four washing machines. Uh, they don't take tokens, which is great. Uh, they don't take any proprietary card system, which is great. Um, but they just don't have any way for you to get any money. So you either have to bring it with you or you're just not going to do laundry at their facilities. Uh, the wash was $275, which I find to be kind of overpriced for what you get. And they did have an equal amount of dryers that were $2 per dryer. So you're looking at $475, almost $5 to do one load of laundry. I did happen to get uh, a quick sneak peek in the girls' restroom. Um, obviously, going to be significantly better than most of the men's bathrooms. Uh, they did look like they were trying to update it by putting this kind of like barn wood stuff around the vanity area. But the showers were no better. Like, the sh these uh, lower bathroom showers, it, the curtain was just on by an old uh, galvanized steel rod. The plumbing was just as good as any outhouse you've ever been in and the paint was coming off the floors were really really bad i, I just kind of felt like i was going to catch something the entire time i was in these restrooms so i was just highly not impressed um, the only thing holding these doors together were a few bolts and that was the extent of your retention system is just an old spring now they did have what some might consider RV storage, but honestly it was just a big open field and they had a few random uh, rigs and trailers sitting out in the field. So I don't really think that this is the most ideal way to do it, but this is what they had available, so I figured I would at least show it to you. Um, they did have this cute little canned ham that was sitting out there, so I thought that was interesting to look at, but this is supposed to be storage. You should put up like a privacy fence or something to separate this. It was just not very good. Okay, so that's pretty much the main campground. Now, the rest of the campground isn't specifically a campground they're like condos and there's also uh, a golf course uh, it's about a mile down the road and what we end up doing is if you already have a golf cart here there is a golf cart path that you can ride all the way to the other end uh, across the street and it'll take you straight over to the golf course but they also have another swimming pool and condominiums over there so that's where we're heading next, so you can see that. So as we pull out of the RV park, we're going to hang a right here back onto 255 and head toward the golf course. So they have condominiums there for people that are just coming in to play golf at the golf course. And the extra swimming pool is over there. With the swimming pool at the RV park being messed up, we had to drive the mile and a half or so down the road in order to get to that area. Uh, that was the most unfortunate part of this trip because the kids always like to go swimming. Kids love to go to the swimming pool, and we had to do this drive every single time we wanted to you know, hop in and take a dip.
So once you finally make the extremely long trek over to the golf course and condominiums, uh, you can kind of read the signs. It'll tell you where exactly the pool is located. Uh, you pull into this open uh, parking lot, which is right next to the golf course, and you can see that the, the pool and the pool house is right here beside it. Overall, it was a, a nice pool area. Uh, the fence, not so much, but as you can see, it goes all the way from roughly three feet, I believe, to eight feet, which is uh, a bit better than a lot of the pools that I see. Um, the place did need a little bit of updating. It looked like the bottom of the pool needed to have a, a repaint. Um, the pool was cold, so this was not a heated pool. They did have some uh, patio furniture out. Again, it's just outdated. You know, some of it felt really rickety, so we had to kind of walk around and pick and choose which ones we wanted. But the pool was located right next to the golf course. I didn't happen to play. I've heard some nice things about it. It's a nice challenging course because of uh, Kentucky's rolling hills and stuff like that. People come in from all over the place and grab themselves a condo and stay here. There were plenty of people playing the day that we happened to show up. And they did have a pro shop up the hill, which I did visit. And, you know, it was okay. Uh, I've seen a whole lot better, but it was a nice little place. Overall, they did have lots of golf cart rentals and stuff like that if you didn't happen to bring your own. All right, guys, this is going to just about do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of Diamond Caverns RV Resort and Golf. If you happen to like it, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more campground reviews just like this. At any rate, thanks so much for watching yet another riveting episode here on the Avian Awesome channel. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I'm going to see you guys again on the next one. Peace.